This is Nate Story with Bright Agritech. Today we're down in Fort Collins, Colorado at Bayberry Fresh with Caden Christensen, the owner. And for those of you who know, he is one of the founding members of Upstart Farmers. And um, today we're just going to do a walkthrough on his brand new greenhouse. Still under construction. You're going to get to see it from the ground up here. And hopefully over the next couple months, we'll get to see it fully built out. So Hayden is one of our Upstart Farmers, and if you don't know, Upstart Farmers is uh, one of our, basically a, a community of farmers that uh, help support each other, they share techniques for marketing, for growing, all of that stuff. Hayden is running a commercial hydroponic farm, so tell us, tell us what you're growing here, Hayden. Okay, so most of what I have in the greenhouse, um, I got a good variety of stuff. Most of it is, on the herb side, is either mint or parsley, as you can see, and then I have a variety of everything else, um, and I also have quite a few more greens like bok choy, kale, um, Swiss chard, and collard greens for the winter time. Awesome, so how are you selling those? So most of the herbs are going um, to restaurants um, or direct. The greens I do more in the winter time because they fetch a little bit better price. Those are gonna go to a winter farmer's market and both of the herbs and the greens also go to my small CSA. So you were one of the first uh, farmers to really start selling live. Well, you were the first to start selling live in Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. Are you, what, what are you doing there? So everything at Whole Foods, um, and the reason I have mostly basil, mint, and parsley is those are the three herbs uh, we're doing there. Um, playing with a little bit of other stuff as well. You bet, and that's all live sales? Correct, all in spring systems. Okay, so tell us how live sales works. Uh, so it's pretty simple, really. Uh, I take a good looking tower out of the greenhouse, haul it down to the store, uh, plop it in a spring system, make sure it's plumbing in, and let them harvest. So the customers will actually cut and harvest the herbs themselves in the store? Correct. There's a produce stand with bags and scissors and uh, a sign that tells them how to do it and they help themselves. That's awesome. So you get them to do all of your harvesting labor for you? Correct. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So when you build these out, you basically put in posts, conduit, and uh, then you plumb your lines in, uh, really similar to what we do up in Laramie and some of our other growers do. But you do something really unique with your gutters. You wanna tell us about these? Yeah, so I mean, what I'm using here, uh, and these are used, I get um, four and a half foot wide vinyl from Home Depot and then I cut it in foot and a half strips. And then I basically make a little ditch out of dirt, put my weed barrier over it and then line it with the, with the uh, vinyl down to the drain. Um, for a cheap alternative to gutters. So you're able to, you're telling me you did the whole greenhouse for 70 bucks worth of vinyl, basically. Roughly, yeah, because they come in, I think, 150 foot rolls. That's pretty amazing. Um, big savings over using gutters uh, like we do and a lot of our other growers do. So that's uh, kind of, that's something that people should probably pay attention to. And maybe if you're starting to build your own greenhouse and you've got a dirt floor, might be something worth looking into. Um, so show us how um, basically these fittings go in and, and how your drainage system is plumbed in here. Yeah, so the drain line's buried in the, the ground. Um, then I do the dirt system, lay the weed barrier over it, and then I just poke a hole through the vinyl and the weed barrier uh, with fitting, and the water just drops straight through. Don't have any leaks or issues or get good flow. Yeah, and I'll say that these are just the fittings that we sell on the website. So if you're looking for these particular drain fittings, check out check out our website, uh, zipgrow.com. You'll be able to find those there. Yeah, and uh, they're hard to find elsewhere. So They can be, yeah. So they're nice. They're not too expensive, and they, they work well for this type of purpose. So um, that's great. And I see over here you're actually um, growing in the soil while you wait to build new racks for more towers. Is that right? Correct. Um, just something for the winter time to fill the space um, since it was quick and easy to put in and as I get to it, I'll add more trellising in here um, in the spring, probably. Right. So it's kind of just a nice way to use the space that you've got uh, while uh, while you wait on on uh, building more racks more and putting in more towers. Correct. So you're in the process of moving into this new greenhouse and building it out to put in all of the towers that you have and put in a bunch of new towers. Um, tell us about the scaling process. Easy, hard? Uh, it's really easy. Um, you can either, of course, build the whole thing at one time if you want, but what I really love about this is I can add a 10 or 20 foot section as I go. I'll add the whole thing, do it all completely, then add the towers, and I can just keep um, going across the greenhouse like you see here 
you know, so it's real easy. You bet. And probably just uh, to, to supply those additional towers, in a hydroponic system at least, you just size up your pump when you need to. If it if it uh, can't meet the challenge of delivering solution to all those towers. Mm -hmm. um, but pretty easy? Yep, really easy. And this pump will handle everything, so I get to just add extra pieces of pipe on. That's all I need to do, really. So as you guys know, growing baser in the wintertime can be really tough, especially up where we're at. One of the fun things that Hayden's doing, he's got um, some uh, basil growing in a shed under LED and, and T5 lighting. So Hayden, you want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing with this basil in here? Yeah, so basically just really packing it in. Um, I got some LEDs on one side and some fluorescents on the other side. Um, that way I can just keep a small space heated during the winter time but still get a decent yield uh, out of the basil and still have that premium crop to sell during the winter time. So you're just trimming these as you go? Yeah, most of these are continuous harvest. Some of them I'll let them grow up so they can be used for live sales as well. That's great. It's pretty hard to grow basil in the winter time. You know, for those of you that don't know, at about 12 hours, unless the basil's getting at least 12 hours of light, it won't grow and it really doesn't like the cool temperatures. So this is kind of a neat workaround that Hayden's using to experimentally this winter to try and figure out what we can possibly do indoors uh, with basil in this area. So I hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough with uh, Hayden today. Hayden, thanks so much for having us and uh, we really appreciate you being willing to show off your greenhouse to us. For more information on what Hayden's doing, go to bayberryfresh.com and check out some of our other uh, greenhouse walkthrough videos.